It's time for the Splash Live from Civic Center TV, featuring stories from and about people like you in the greater West Bloomfield area. Simulcast on cable, 89.3 Lakes FM, social media, and the web. Now live from Green Media Center on Walnut Lake Road, it's the Splash Live! Live, local, social, it's the Splash Live on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM welcoming you to a new week here in Greater West Bloomfield. I'm Tyler Keeft, joined as always by Kevin McIntosh. Happy Monday, Kevin. Happy to be here, Tyler. Thank you again. Another day, another opportunity to talk to the people and just to live a great life, man. Happy to be here. Let's talk. Let's go ahead. Yeah, it was an exciting weekend in Greater West Bloomfield. People from across the U.S. came to the Greater West Bloomfield area, all in the name yeah. of, of, of appreciating amazing original artwork at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. We sent our reporter Jake Schaff out to the main event to learn more. It's one of those events the community looks forward to every year, the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show, which brings artists from all across the entire country together to showcase their work to the general public. A wide array of vendors showcasing so many different types of artwork, from sculptures to paintings to photography, you name it, it's here. In an absolutely rewarding experience, not only for the artists, but for the visitors as well. Well, this is probably the third year in a row we've been here. There's always some fun stuff, and um, I'm one of the uh, participants that the vendors tend to like because I actually spend money. It's just a pleasure to walk around and, and see each of the booths and just see the different things that people like to create. Yeah. What's fun about the place is it's so variable, and I'll wind up buying something I never even thought about. I have rather wide interests. I have no ability at all in art, so I really appreciate it, these, what these people do. And even though it might seem their stuff is expensive when you look at the time that went into it, they're getting paid not much for what they do. So I'm happy to, my wife and I are happy to support the artists as well as greatly enjoy what it is that we purchase and bring back home. It's just special to walk along and, and look at all the, the things that people make. And it's, it's, uh, lo it's just lovely. It, it's a nice place to come. What do you think of this event bringing all these artists from all across the country together? I think it's a great, great idea. It's, it brings people together, it brings art together, and you can see different styles, get ideas, and think about what you really like. What has it been like to become involved with such a big event like this? Uh, I've only heard great things about Orchard Lake Art Fair, and it's a, a real honor to be part of it, be accepted into it. So you're going to see amazing artwork from, from painting to ceramic artists. Um, there's some sculptures um, around the corner that are, are, are monumental in scale. So you're going to see all kinds of different stuff here. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's just it's a great location. It's a good market where you know this area of Detroit has the right crowd that cares about art, and value, values art, and uh, you know is, has the disposable income to, to actually purchase art and put it on their walls. So it makes this a great a great event for that. Art is something that is bonding, it is universal, it's not Republican or Democratic, it's not Hindu or Jewish or Christian, it's just art and art is bonding. Mm -hmm. It is not judgmental, it is meant to be happy and yet it does make you think. And uh, so it's just a wonderful thing where there's no judgment at all. Most of it of course is aesthetically beautiful and it it's just makes you happy to be human in a world where there's so much that's not very pleasant going on. It's just, it's just a wonderful experience to see what people yeah. can create. Yeah, human that beings. I, can't, I would not be able to do that, but we appreciate seeing and what others do. Yeah. Yeah. Human it's beings lovely. being at their best. What makes us human is art. <laughs> Everywhere you look, you see something new and exciting, and that's what makes the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show so special. It's why the event has been popular for so many years and why it's going to continue to be popular for next year and beyond. For Civic Center TV, I'm Jake Schaff. Great music, at the end, great music at the end there from Vladimir Gorodkin, who's always out at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show as well. It was a great event. Our full coverage of the show is on our website on civiccentertv.com. Also on our social media videos from across Saturday and Sunday out at the art show at Civic Center TV 15 on Facebook and at Civic Center TV 
on YouTube as well. While well, people from all over the country came out to the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show, some joined us from close to home, including in downtown Detroit. Christina Lidke, a textile artist, uh, joined, joined me at the Orchard Lake Fine Arts Show to tell me more about her specialty clothing brand made right here in Metro Detroit. So I am a clothing designer and my brand is a story, A-S-T-O-U-R-I, and what I do is I take iconic city artwork and put it on women's clothing. So uh, kind of a leveled up approach to t-shirt and hoodies so you can represent your pride, whether it's Detroit, New York, uh, Paris, uh, Go Olympics, uh, Team USA, and all other, you know, other cities. And so we have shawls and we have dresses, we have skirts, and we have all types of things that represent the local Detroit area, but also cities that you love. And that's a really unique perspective to take with textile art because it's something that people are wearing. It's personal to them. And you know, how does that element play into the way you design these experiences of various places that people are then wearing? Yes, it's a great question. So um, I, you know, we're named a story for a reason. All of our clothing tells stories. So it plays into, again, this homage of the city pride of whether it's your hometown or somewhere where you love visiting or memories that you've had with your family. I have a client who did a custom order with me recently who made um, an entire shawl from Paris and she's giving one to her daughter and one for her because this is a memory they shared together. So this type of pride and this beautiful memory that you're having with your family or friends kind of plays into how we design. And in, in terms of the fabric that you're using, you know, people are wearing these. They're, they're not just beautiful pieces of art. It's, it's people's clothing. So you know, what are they going to feel like when people ultimately come down to the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show and buy some of these different shoals and, and different articles of clothing? Yes, Tyler. So yes, it's wearable art. And that is how we explain many things. It's wearable art. You're wearing your, again, you're wearing this beautiful part of your story. Um, I would say the biggest thing that I always get from my clients and my customers is you get compliments. You are always getting compliments because it's unique and it's different and it's one of a kind. And so um, a lot of my clients reach out and they're like, I wore it to this event and it was about Detroit or it was about Paris or it was about New York. And the amount of compliments I got was just incredible. So it's not only a part of you being very different and showing up in your, in your beautiful story, your beautiful self, but you also get complimented because you're getting complimented on the story that you have to tell as well. Christina Lidke is with us at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show from downtown Detroit. So, I mean, you're, you're close to us here in Greater West Bloomfield, De Metro Detroit, very close to home. What's the art show experience like when you come out to a place like this with so many artists from around the world and get to talk to art lovers, too, that are really passionate about what they're finding here today? I mean, going to art shows is just such an incredible experience because, to your point, it's it's so unique and different. Everybody has this beautiful talent that they're bringing. And so you get to experience art, all types of different art and all people from all over and many walks of life. And they have so many stories to tell. And so it's a very unique experience. And I really urge people to go to their local art shows because you never know what you're going to find. But you also are meeting people and experiencing their stories from, from you know, everything that they're creating. And you can see all of our videos talking to various artists at the Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Those from around our local area. We talked to another from Ypsilanti who had some great wooden artwork out in the main area at the corner of Powers and Daly Road. And so many others that came in from all across the country, from Indiana, from Illinois, and so many other places. We talked to a family from Georgia. All of that is on our website, civiccentertv.com, Facebook at Civic Center TV 15, and YouTube at Civic Center TV as well. August is here, which means it is car show season in Metro Detroit. And before we get to the Woodward Dream Cruise, before you get to Gino's pre-Dream Cruise car show, you get a chance to kick off car show season this weekend nearby us here in Greater West Bloomfield in Troy at the Troy Traffic Jam happening Sunday, August 4th at, at, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, at the Columbia Center on Big Beaver Road. Joining us to tell us more about this kick off the car show season is the executive director of the Troy Historic Village, Jen Peters and Mark Lieberman as well from Nostalgic Mortaring. Thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you both on. Jen, I'll start with you. This is the 16th annual Troy Traffic Jam. Tell us about this event and how it really is that perfect kickoff to car show season. 
Absolutely. Uh, we are a community event, like you said, 16 years. The great thing is we pull together a bunch of great cars, everything from antiques to exotics uh, and everything in between. We'll have about 300 cars, but we'll have about five to 6,000 spectators. And those are folks from the community. Some of them are car gurus and some of them are people who are coming for the first time to a car show to see what's going on. And they get to see these great antiques and classics. They get to learn about them at our tech talks. They get to enjoy you know a jam we've got some live music this year we've got uh, kids pedal car races we've got robotics demonstrations so it's really a jam-packed day full of full of activities not just a car show but a car show plus yeah and, and, and as you said it's something for car lover, lovers of all different levels whether they're experts and they go to all these car shows across our local area this time of the year or they just want to see some cool cars learn and have some fun and Jen, one of the many people they'll be able to learn a lot from at the Troy Traffic Jam is Mark Lieberman. He's the president of Nostalgic Motoring. He'll be at the Troy Traffic Jam with a very special vehicle himself. He'll have, he'll have the, uh, one of your Tuckers with you at that. This is a really specialty car because there's only a few of them that are still remaining uh, in, in our area. Tell us about the Tucker and why this is the special vehicle people need to see at this show. Well, Tucker is, uh, has got an amazing story behind it, and the vehicle is incredible uh, just in its physical presence. Uh, but uh, there was a movie done uh, on it by Francis Ford Coppola, starring Jeff Bridges uh, a number of years ago. And if you haven't seen it, you should. Uh, but the Tucker automobile is very special. Um, they only built 51 cars in totality. Um, uh, I'm bringing the last car off the production line, car number 50. Uh, and uh, it's a beautiful example. Uh, these are very special vehicles. Uh, they're rear engine, uh, aluminum engine, have many safety uh, breakthrough features. Um, uh, the first padded dashboard, uh, pop out uh, safety glass. Uh, they were they were designed to uh, be be very fast but very functional cars. This is an automobile that's almost 19 feet long, but yet in 1948 had a top speed of 130 miles an hour. Uh, and you know what else would go 130 miles an hour, let alone this big four-door sedan? So it was quite incredible. And the story behind Tucker is equally incredible, as you had uh, um, uh, a lot of drama surrounding surrounding Tucker when it when it came out, and uh, an SEC investigation, and uh, a whole variety of things. So I'm going to be out there with the Tucker. I'll be telling the story of Tucker, and uh, you'll get a chance to see firsthand this historic automobile. Years and years ago, we did a, a special feature. Steve Lado joined us as a, for a special report alongside you to talk about Tucker 48. You'll be bringing Tucker 50 out there. And, and I had to take a look back at that as, as I got ready to talk to you today, Mark, because some of what you talked about in that conversation were the, the special safety features and sort of those modern features we expect in a car that were present in Tucker's way back in the day. Talk about some of those, including some interesting things that were put in place to help people maybe avoid uh, injuries in the event of a crash or being jostled around. Well, here, w one of the uh, most prominent features of the car is its center-mounted headlight. It turns with the steering, and, and while, while we, we're, we're uh, uh, desensitized to some of these features now, um, the center headlight was was you know very uh, stylish at the time and and in fact some of the states had actually made it illegal. You had to cover your center headlight because they thought that it would confuse oncoming drivers, um, which is interesting because the center headlight never lights up when you're going straight. It only lights up into a turn, so it would light your pathway into a corner. Um, some of the other interesting innovations in the car are reversible seats. You can take the front seat out and put it in the back in order to even the wear. Um, the car was was innovative in terms of suspension, too. It has four-wheel independent suspension, which you didn't really see in 1948. Um, very fascinating car, milestone styling. It looks like it's going 100 miles an hour while it's standing still. Big pontoon fenders and suicide doors. Very cool automobile. 
You can see it all for yourself at the at the Troy Traffic Jam Sunday, August 4th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That is at the Columbia Center on Big Beaver Road, just at the corner of Livernois. Mark Lieberman is with us from Nostalgic Motoring, one of the many people that will be out there showing off one of their classic cars. We're also joined by Jen Peters, who is the executive director of the Troy Historic Village, hosting this event here in Oakland County. Jen, it's got to be so cool for you working with different vendors and with, with of course, the car collectors to bring Bring people together in a way that you know, really shows the passion of the local area. How does that factor in to bringing out this really breakout of the car show season? Right. Well, we couldn't do this without support and Mark and we have a whole team of, of car experts who uh, bring their specialty to it. So we'll have a lot of Corvettes, some exotics, things like that. But we've also partnered with other people. So we have Troy Fire Department, Troy Police Department. They're out there um, with some of their vehicles. We've got some of the Troy First Robotics teams from the local high school and middle school. And that really brings that educational piece to it, along with the education of the history of the cars, like Mark was talking talking about with the Tucker. I learned something new every year. I knew about the headlight. I didn't know that it went on and off depending on which how you were driving, which is awesome. So it's it's a unique community event in that it is the car show and so much more. It is our biggest fundraiser for the Troy Historic Village. We, like I said, we're always bringing elements of education. We're always bringing elements of community to this. We have some kids hands on activities. We've got that pedal car race that brings some of that history into things and is a fun activity for the kids. Um, and it's and it's all then benefits the village where we bring 28,000 visitors a year for field trips, for history talks, for uh, hands on blacksmithing classes and watercolor classes so it's it's a great event and it supports a great place um, I'm sitting here in the village this morning right now because I want you to see just a little bit of, of what that money is going to and what it's supporting and, and uh, to follow up on that Jen why are these sorts of events not only important to Detroit historic village or to the people that live in the city of Troy but to those all across <coughs> Oakland County because this is not just isolated to Troy. Anybody can come no. to the Troy traffic jam. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, we have that huge draw, five, 6,000 people. You are coming to Big Beaver Avenue, one of our, our, um, our commercial district, our center of Troy, the heart of Troy. So you're going to come and enjoy a day in Troy, and you're also going to probably come and have something to eat while you're here. Go, go do a little shopping. Um, it really showcases the city. It really showcases those partnerships, how we work together in the city to really provide quality programs, quality events for families and people of all ages. Well, uh, Jen, we thank you for being with us and Mark as well. Before we let you, go, you both go, uh, as we approach the 16th annual Troy Traffic Jam on Sunday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mark, there's so many people that are going to come out there with their classic cars. Jen previewed some of them, the Corvettes, the other muscle cars, you with, with Tucker 50. Now, from your perspective, as someone that goes to these car shows, what do you do to maintain these cars? Because some of them last for a very long time. What goes into that? Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because, you know, all of these cars require attention and maintenance. And we see so many of these. I own Nostalgic Motoring and we buy, sell, and restore and service classic automobiles in a variety of, uh, of circumstances. And we see so many cars that uh, suffer from what we'll call uh, deferred maintenance. But, you know, for, for the majority of these collector cars, they're something that the owner is very passionate about. So they tend to pay attention to these cars and provide them their their needs you know the 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 kicker on these is that um these are vehicles that were built under a different engineering uh, uh situation a long time ago so they're not modern vehicles they don't operate like modern vehicles and you can't take care of them like modern vehicles as a result you have to step back in time and and spend a moment where you're going to uh put yourself in you know, 1960, uh, 1950, and say, okay, what kind of service was done there? How can we apply today's modern materials, modern oils, uh, technology, in order to make sure that this vehicle lasts forever? I mean, how long can we make these things go? A lot of these vehicles are generational. They're passed down from father to son to grandson, and uh, people cherish these vehicles. So you take care of them, you main, maintain them, you find uh, 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 a company such as ourselves that's capable of taking care of this car for you, and you make sure that they last for uh, many, many years to come. 
and then and when you make them last, you are able to show them off to so many people, and people can enjoy one of the great cultures of Metro Detroit, Little Motor City, for crying out loud. The Troy Traffic Jam kicks off car show season across Oakland County this weekend, uh, Sunday, August 4th, 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. at the uh, Columbia Center on Big Beaver Road at the corner of Livernois in Troy. Jen, Mark, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you so thank much. You. Glad to have you both on as we kick off car show season. Kevin, so many other shows coming up in our local area. The Troy Traffic Jam really is that first one that kicks it off right in the first weekend of August as we get just a few weeks away from Geno's Pre-Dream Cruise Car Show and a, a couple weeks beyond that from the Woodward Dream Cruise. Now is that time of the year for car lovers. Yeah, and, and you pretty much segued into it. And if you are a car lover, we have another one locally that you want to mark your calendars for. The West Bloomfield High School Robotics Team is actually combining two unique passions into one in a couple of weeks on August 11th. It'll be at the West Bloomfield High School. The robotics team is actually putting on a classic car event with these two passions. And actually with us here on Splash Live, we have Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society 50th anniversary event chairman rick bardis i appreciate you for being here rick first and foremost just talking a little bit more about this car rally that'll be happening on august 11th well we saw how successful they were last year in their first ever car show and uh, we attended and they've got such a beautiful campus and central location uh we thought it would be great to uh partner with them mm -hmm. on their established uh, car show and extend to our 50th anniversary since there's so much automotive history here in the uh, greater West Bloomfield area. And that was the inspiration. The poker rally really came out of uh, what really brought people to this area originally. Mm. And it all started with a bunch of the uh, car guys coming out of Detroit and having rallies out to what is now the Pine Lake Country Club. And uh, it got so successful and... Uh, they have huge trophies all over the Pine Lake Country Club from 1906, seven and eight for all the various divisions of cars that would race out here and win this trophy. So that was the inspiration. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay, so that is kind of unique. I'm glad that essentially we have a, a local organization joining with our local high school to kind of make it even uh, an even better and bigger event. So we're talking about Sunday, August 11, 9, a.m. to 3 p.m., starting off with the car show, 9 a.m. to 12, and then a poker rally, 12 p.m. to 3. Now, what I'm seeing is during this event, their poker rally, uh, they'll visit his various historical sites in the area, learning about the region's connection to the automotive industry. Can you explain the significance of these historic sites that you chose for this event? Yes, and uh, some of them uh, are so unique, I don't think you'd find another one here within four or five hundred miles of where we are mm. uh one of them actually you're going to be able to tour a cow birthing room beneath uh what was a barn belonged to a uh, automotive entrepreneur who worked at the henry ford uh, piquette plant so uh how many people that you know uh have a home that includes in their sub basement a cow birthing barn right <laughs> so uh but this entrepreneur's name was leroy pelletier uh, owned a big farm out off Commerce Road. Uh, another location is off Green Lake, and that is the Flanders home, which he built. And he had over a thousand acres for his farm mm. on uh, off Green Lake Road, uh, Commerce Road. He owned uh, about five lakes back there, and his home will be another stop. It is currently the villa's uh, uh, nursing home. Uh, again, the museum uh, will be a stop, and uh, the history of the museum is it was a hotel. And uh, once people were able to get out here, either on their public transportation, uh, uh, trains, or the railway, or a car, they came out to the Lakes area and stayed at the various hotels for a weekend. Uh, another stop will be uh, West Acres Library, and West Acres in itself is, this, is a uh, community that was put together in the 40s and uh, they had their own carpools down to the automotive plants, they had their own library. Uh, that'll be another stop. Uh, in addition, there's a new 
Transportation Museum in Pontiac that's agreed to join us. They just opened and their uh, grand opening is coming up, I think, this week. Uh, the Pontiac Transportation Museum will be a, a stop on our journey around. And uh, I think uh, that was it. We have, okay. uh, oh, those are the six locations. Okay, okay, good. So we're, we're talking about a few different spots that has a lot of history and a lot to learn there also. With us right here on the Splash Live from the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society, 50th anniversary event chairman, Rick Bardis. I wanna know from your perspective, like, how do you envision this poker rally, the poker rally participants to essentially, like, understand and appreciate West Bloomfield's automotive uh, history? So our plan is uh, everything can be done. Uh, if you go to the car show, they're open at 9 and they go till noon. But if you arrive at 11, 1130, take in the car show, uh, register for our event. You should be able to make all six stops if you need to in a, a period of about two and a half hours. Oh. Uh, what we do at each stop is have a docent there who will be delivering a message, a brief message about the history of that location. Uh, in the case of the uh, Pelletier Barn, you'll be able to take a journey down into the cow birthing room and see what it was like in the early 1900s to have uh, animals on your property. Uh, we hope to give every person per car a poker card mm -hmm. and the best poker hand when they get back to the high school by three o'clock will win the first prize. Second best poker hand, we have a second prize and the third best poker hand, we have a third prize. Oh, wow. So <laughs> it pretty much, it's been done over years on boats, in cars. There's no timing of it and you don't have to start in location one and end in location five or six, you can choose which way you want to go, but they're all in a very close proximity to the high school where when you finish, you're probably a 10 minute ride back to the high school. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. So it, it almost sounds like a mixture of a scavenger hunt in a way too, because you go to different locations and you learn a little bit about the automotive history there and the history of West Bloomfield there, but then you also get a car. And you get essentially, I'm at the end of it, at least six cards, which makes up your poker hand. And then from there, it's just whoever has the best poker hand wins the prize. Did I explain that correctly? Correct. So uh, in the case nice. of the sixth card, you if you've got a great hand after five stops, you don't need to go to the sixth stop. Ah. But if you've got a hand that misses one card, you can throw that bad card away and go get that sixth card and maybe fill out for your straight or your flush or whatever. So. Yeah. That's the reason for the sixth stop. Uh, I might add that all this goes around the, uh, our sponsors, uh, the number one sponsor that I wanna call out is uh, Orchard Lake Schools because uh, 50 years ago in 1974, uh, Father Wally Jemba, the rector there, called together some community people and uh, they formed the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society right on the campus of Orchard Lake Schools and they are one of our sponsors uh, of the event. They are also a sponsor with West Bloomfield Parks and Graphic X and Sylvan Lake. And then we have sponsors for each of the sites. So far, we're, we're able to sell four out of the five sites. We have the complete insurance out of uh, Kego Harbor, Graphic, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the villa out of uh, West Bloomfield at the Flanders House. Uh -huh. Winning Imprints on Orchard Lake Road will be sponsoring the museum. And uh, we're working on uh, uh, Dex and Docks and Silver Lake will also be sponsoring one of the sites. So we're successfully getting the community to support our 50th anniversary event. Oh, yes. And we definitely want to thank all the sponsors and everybody that's helped to make this uh, event very, very possible for our community. Uh, what are your hopes for the legacy and uh, for this event and the impact that it'll have on a greater West Bloomfield community? Well, first and foremost, we really want to see the robotics club to continue to grow. I know they have uh, clubs all the way down into the middle schools. And uh, if they uh, continue on and we have lots of historic uh, uh, cars in the West Bloomfield area that love to show them off and it is leading into dream cruise, mm -hmm. our goal would be to make this an annual event and really support the community as they've supported us increase our membership. Uh, obviously, there is a cost to this. Uh, the membership 
to our association is only $25. So members can uh, join or non-members can join for $25 and then the uh, car show is $5 for them. So it's a $30 entry fee per car. Mm. And the uh, members of the West Bloomfield Historic Society, they pay $5 if they're already a dues paying member. So it's a pretty good value. It's a family fun kind of a thing. You can put six people in a car. They could be your children. Uh, everybody uh, that I've talked to does not know much of the history of these buildings they drive by every day, the uh, places that uh, were so important to our history. And these were farms 100 years ago. And mm -hmm. uh, now we pass them and all you see is homes and lush lawns and dogs and kids playing but uh, there's a lot of history going back about 100 years there you go and just like you said we would never know about it if it wasn't for historians and people who know about that knowledge and uh and and, and here to actually share those resources and information with it and we thank you again so much for taking your time to be here with us rick explaining everything about the greater uh greater west bloomfield historical society 50th anniversary and the poker rally once again uh 50th anniversary event chairman for the greater west bloomfield historical society rick bardis we appreciate your time thank you and we hope to see you all three weeks from sunday august 11th August 11th, a great day. That's a Sunday. West Bloomfield High School is where it will be. And, and, and like I said, it will be a very unique event, Tyler, because we are combining two passions together. We are looking at the Greater uh, Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society side of it, and then we're also going to transition into the um, West Bloomfield High School robotics team side of it also, who, do, who also has a part in this, Tyler. Yeah, the robotics team is really leading the charge on this car show coming up. It's, it's all about supporting the West Bloomfield High School robotics team. All the dollars that go into the actual car event itself will help to support our local robotics team that does amazing work all throughout the right. school year as they get ready to go back in late August to school and back into competition shortly after that and then of course the poker rally adding another interesting element to it that connects not only greater mm -hmm. west bluefields communities proper but also nearby areas and a new local car attraction in the pontiac uh, in that pontiac museum yeah, yeah, and like we said, it's going to be great, unique uh, perspective with the robotics combining with the car event and actually joining us right here on the Splash Live to add that perspective from the West Bloomfield High School robotics team. We have Kimberly Luddy, one of the students, talking about the blend of these two unique passions, robotics and classic cars. Kimberly? This is the second time we've done this, so it's a fairly new event. Um, it's basically it's been at the high school um, you just come off, you show off your cars, and then the high school team is actually the people who are like judging, figuring out what we like about the car, and then you get your trophy at the end. And so we got some pretty cool cars last year, and I'm hoping we get some cooler ones this year. And talking about cool cars, everything from hot rods, classic cars, exotic cars, rare cars, that type of thing we, is what we can expect at this event. And not only that, we're expecting to learn a lot. And that's why robotics team member and West Bloomfield High School student Olivia May actually talked about what she plans to take away from this event. Probably just making future connections for myself and like in my future career, because I do want to go into engineering, hopefully in the future. And mm -hmm. I feel it's really good to make connections with people that are really into that for, you know, my future, my future. And I'm really excited for the event. I haven't done it. So I'm looking forward to it. Essentially, it's a lot to take away from this event, right? Like we said, classic cars and robotics combining together. But these students, like we said, they plan to take away a lot and they can actually make the correlation between robotics, what they learn in robotics and these classic cars and that's why robotics team member and student max columbus explains it here when we talked to them when we did interviews on the west bloomfield high school robotics youtube we asked them about their car how they found out and they really liked hearing from us we got a lot of advice for how to improve stuff and we like to hear what the community thinks of how we can better and just to build those relationships and okay. see people do like our works. Yes, and essentially 
We're looking forward to a great event and to learn a lot, Tyler. Sunday, August 11th, West Bloomfield High School, 8.30 to 12.30 p.m. is where you can actually experience that great car show with the West Bloomfield High School team. Tyler, I, I think I'm looking forward to learning a lot about it. Yeah, that's going to be a really fun day out at West Bloomfield High School and then all across the community. You get to enjoy these classic cars. You get to see the robotics team in action at the yep. high school to show off so much of what they were working on last school year, some of what they're bringing to the table mm -hmm. in the 2024-25 school year. And you get to see all that really cool stuff. You got a little preview of it if you were out at the Kego Harbor block party a couple of weeks ago. But to see it all in action, plus some classic cars and maybe a little friendly conversation competition yourself Sunday, August 11th, the second annual uh, 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 West Bloomfield High School Robotics Car Show Fundraiser at West Bloomfield High School. But Kevin, before we get to that, nice. a special first time event happening in Greater West Bloomfield that helps us to support some of our leading women in the business community. Yeah, so real quick, I'm so happy she has some time to join us right here because we're talking about this inaugural women's pop-up shop event that'll be happening at orchard mall that'll be august 3rd 12 p.m to 4 p.m and so joining us right here with me on the splash live we have executive director for the west bloomfield chamber of commerce suzanne levine thank you so much for being here let's just talk about it what was the inspiration behind this inaugural event well we get a lot of uh, inquiries from our local businesses how to promote them. And we have a lot of women owned businesses in our area, not just in West Bloomfield, but the surrounding uh, cities and townships. And so I was collaborating with the Great Lakes Women's Business Council and trying to figure out how we can promote and showcase some of these fabulous women owned businesses. A lot of them are, you know, based in their home. Mm -hmm. And so I with this idea, and thanks to our great partner, Orchard Lake Mall, Kelly uh, Woodley over at uh, Orchard Lake Mall, we decided that would be the perfect venue to showcase some of these fabulous, independent women-owned businesses that people have no idea exist. Yes, and I'm glad that you all are doing that, and you're partnering with uh, different local organizations, the Orchard Mall, to make this type of thing happen. And uh, so I, I want to get that, since we are focusing on women and women-owned businesses, what has the response been from some of the vendors or people who know about the, uh, the event so far? The response has been overwhelming. Um, we had to sort of shut off the amount of people that can attend. We'll have to see the success of oh, this. Wow. I'm depending on the community to show up. It's free. It's from 12 to 4, August 3rd on a Saturday. And I think it should be an amazing event because we have s such a diverse group of women, not just from our area, but from the surrounding area, like I say, even Detroit, uh -huh. which is interesting that they want to come here to do business. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited about it. Um, I expect uh, a great turnout. And I really am hoping that these women find an opportunity not only to network with one another to you know help promote their business but the community gets to know about all these really great independent wow. boutique kind of businesses that these women have yeah yeah and it builds that sense of community too lets each other know that we are here I, it, it can build some type of barter system with each other and businesses and things of that nature. trust me i'm all for that right here joining me on the splash live we have executive director for the greater west bloomfield chamber of commerce suzanne levine now what are we talking about with in regards to type of products that we're expecting? Do you know what type of products that, that we're expecting from this event or what's going to be sold? We have so many, like it's such a diverse group. We have uh, someone who makes candles, someone who makes soap. We have makeup. We have um, mm. our own uh, Lisa Berkey, uh, who has Goldie's Mandel Bread. Uh, I'm looking forward to those samples. Um, <laughs> We have uh, a glass making um, company. We have um, someone who makes her own, you know, gift cards. We have gift baskets. We have someone, um, a Mary Kay. We also have like home care person. We have um, uh, other home care people, uh, okay. Karen Gordon, who's senior services. So we have such a great array from health to beauty to just, you know, things for the home, healthy products from our Melaleuca representative mm. and great um, people that help me all the time on these events. Kim Odekirk is a travel agent and she also makes these really cool diamond painting okay. things. We have such a great array of different women-owned businesses, mm. women that 
I had no idea existed. So I'm really excited just from that point, you know, trying to learn about how to help other people in our community that don't have a brick and mortar shop. Correct. Um, and, so it's been really great. No, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because the key thing about this is, like you said, there's businesses out there that we don't even know about. They're operating in people's homes, basements and rooms, whatever the case may be. And they more than likely offer a lot of great things. And it's right here locally. And I'm glad you also mentioned that there'll be a travel agent. So there's not just goods. There's also Amazing. services that you'll be offering. So I love that. Now, beyond just this event, how does the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce support women entrepreneurs in the community? Well, years ago, um, I was contacted from women who wanted sort of a specialty group, so I created our WIN, our Women's Inspiration Network. Mm. At the time, we had great speakers at the West Bloomfield Public Library, and then, of course, COVID hit, so we sort of obviously pivoted like everyone else, and we do them on Zoom, where every month we feature a different great woman speaker to offer advice, whether it's marketing, um, accounting, maybe it's just networking information, maybe it's just a way for them to highlight their businesses. We are gonna go back uh, to in-person uh, next year uh, at the library, so that should be great. But the WIM has been really successful because we've had some very dynamic speakers. The great thing about Zoom is that we've been able to feature women out of our area. We've even had some women from England talk about how they, you know, how they want to impact uh, the American market. Mm. So it's really great. Uh, it's a really great way. I've partnered with um, Oakland Thrive to help some of our women. Um, I think, you know, I, I, we partnered with Destiny Williams over at um, right. uh, 10,000 small, Goldman Sachs, 10,000 small businesses. Mm -hmm. I've tried to help women businesses. I, you know, I'm here to serve the community, every aspect of the community. Um, you know, obviously I want to help women as well. And they have a different set of, I say, obstacles that they have to uh, overcome. So I really am so excited when I have an opportunity to help direct them and perhaps connect them to ways to keep their business thriving. I love to hear that. With me right now on the Splash Live, Executive Director for the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Levine. Now, can we talk about the success? How are you measuring the success? I would imagine since this is the inaugural event, we want more. How are you measuring success from this first one? Well, I guess we'll, we'll have to see how many people attend and we'll talk to all the vendors and we'll send out a survey and see, you know, what they think we can improve. Would they do it again? Mm -hmm. And we'll have to consider if it's really that successful, perhaps finding a larger venue for them to showcase um, all of their, you know, individual businesses. Gotcha. So we won't really know the success until afterwards. I can just tell you from the interesting amount of people that we've been able to contact through Greater Great Lakes Women's Business Council and our own Facebook page and website. It's really been astounding to me, uh, the outreach. Uh, and of course, thank you so much to Civic Center TV for helping promote this event because we know that no event is successful unless we get the, the audience and people to come and just even learn about these businesses, even if they don't necessarily need their services. Right. Hopefully they'll get the business card and mm -hmm. at some point they may. Um, yeah. We even have uh, town and country uh, doors. They sell garage doors and epoxy floors, and that's an, a woman-owned business. So we're so happy nice. to show them. They're a chamber member. Um, and you don't have to be a chamber member to uh, be a vendor at this particular uh, venue. I'm trying to do a lot more outreach in the community. Mm -hmm. um, that's sort of my goal. I mean, yes, of course, I'm here to serve our chamber members first and foremost, but right. I can see myself an ambassador for Michigan. And, you know, anything I can do to bring business into our community, um, I've done a great job. And we appreciate that, too. And this shows right here with your effort. Suzanne, before we let you go, any additional information that you want to give out to people looking to attend, looking to be a vendor, or uh, even support women-owned businesses locally? Well, we're going to be sending out a new flyer, um, you know, inviting the public so they know about all the different vendors that are going to be there. That should be going out uh, today. It's free. It's 12 to 4. We even have a food truck that's going to be outside, and we have a couple restaurants, you know, uh, Shangri-La uh, and Jagged Fork um, within, and plus we'll be selling, you know, not selling, we'll probably be giving away, um, obviously, some samples of 
Mondo bread and some other things. Um, and uh, just, you know, come have a good time, bring the family, it's free. Learn about these women owned businesses, perhaps, Perhaps you're a woman owns business and you never thought about how you can promote it. So that's what we're here to do is really to support our communities, support women, and hopefully have a great time doing it. Right. And we are here to do the job to advocate and continuously support and put the word out again. Thank you so much again, talking about the women pop up shop event happening at Orchard Mall, August 3rd, 12 to 4 p.m. in West Bloomfield from the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Suzanne Levine. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you again for always having me. I appreciate it. So happy to be able to have an inaugural event that supports women entrepreneurs locally at Orchard Mall, like we said, August 3rd, 12 to 4 p.m. If you are interested, want to find more, we do have an email, W bloomfieldchamber at gmail.com is what you want to email or call 248-626-3636 for more information regarding that tyler looking forward to a great event yeah going to be a great way to show off some of the businesses in our community that are led by uh, inc incredibly wise women that are putting together the, these great products, these, these great different business ventures from right here in Greater West Bloomfield, highlighting the work that they're putting in, supporting them, and a way to get to know some of our local small businesses as well. Always an mm -hmm. important thing to do all throughout the year and a unique event coming to Greater West Bloomfield from our local chamber. Kevin, this time of the year, a lot of kids going off to band camp or just coming home from band camp, but some have been focusing on those towns talents of theirs in music all summer long. You know what, Tyler? We talked a lot about art. We talked a lot about people internationally coming into our area. But now we're going to talk about someone who took their art and actually traveled the world and came back home. Actually, we're talking about a student ambassador from the Blue Lake International Exchange Program who recently visited Germany, France, the Netherlands, Poland, Switzerland, and Denmark. And actually joining us right here live on the splash, we have Ross Miller, West Bloomfield resident and Blue Lake International Exchange Program jazz musician. Thank you so much for being here, Ross. All right. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so Ross, a, a very, very international, unique event. First and foremost, let's talk about what what instrument are you playing first and foremost in the band? So I played the trumpet, and so that's okay. starting off with that. And I was the third trumpet, so in jazz, there's four different trumpets usually, and I got the third part of it. Ooh, okay, interesting. So let's talk about this international experience first and foremost. Go into, uh, uh, describe your experience overall traveling to these different countries. It was really cool. I mean, you got a mix of cultural ex exchanges because, like, everywhere mm -hmm. was different slightly, and you had every, a lot of different cultures, and you got to see different cultures. Like, in Denmark, there was a lot of like, sailing culture and a lot of stuff about that. But even like we went to mm -hmm. a place in the north, like northern part of Germany, and you had similar stuff about like Vikings, and like apparently a big Viking city was there, and it's like it's crazy to think like yeah, that's kind of cool, <laughs> and just see like they yeah, had like I know right stuff, and like stuff like that. I found that awesome because <laughs> it's just nice. I don't know. On the, it's on the flip side, you just never it's stuff you never would think about, and then you're like oh. This was real, mm -hmm. and this happened. Mm -hmm. Man, I love it. See, and then these are the types of things that we only see on TV, on the internet, but then you actually go there, you live it, you breathe it, you see it, you soak it in, and it's a life-changing experience. With us right here on the Splash Live, West Bloomfield resident, Blue Lake International Exchange Program jazz band member, Ross Miller. So I want to talk about overall, how do you feel like that experience in these different countries and performing there? actually changed and shaped you as an artist and musician? I think it definitely had an impact. I would say I definitely had a lot of, like, because when you were there, you were there with host families and you were there to perform, but you were also just there to do things. And I would say I had a lot of work or a lot of growth just, like, getting ready and having to do that all myself. No one there would 
because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I might have had like one person there to help me, but it was usually me, and I would say it helped me a lot with that, and just being someone who uh, can get ready by themselves, and not have to need someone to tell me do this, do that, do that, and also I would say yeah, just managing, yeah. like getting better as a musician. One of like mm-hmm. our trumpet players was literally going into teaching and was a really good teacher. And so I learned a lot about my instrument, a lot about my weaknesses, and a lot about my strengths as a player. There you go. And it that was huge, and I think that was very important for me, especially when I went to band camp here, um, lit, which I just got back from yesterday, and that helped me a lot to think about those things as I was there. Yeah, yeah, and getting a different perspective on your own instrument from artists internationally. The way they listen to music compose music is it's not all the same so you you learn a little bit more a little bit more about you know an instrument that you know we have that seems very simple but it's so much more to it man i love the perspective and the maturity that you bring to that and that you took away from it so would you travel in so many different places ross you have a favorite place that you travel or, or i'm sorry not travel that you performed at favorite venue and why that's a good Oh, so first and foremost, I would say I loved all the venues. I would say each one was different Good because answer. we like we went to like the big city of Berlin, but we also mostly went to smaller towns. And I would say probably my favorite venue was the the one in this little town in in southern Germany called Gemmingen. And basically, mm. what we did there is we just. We were in this very nice venue, and it was fun. And then we also got to play with, they have this thing called the Blaskapel Gemmingen, which translates to Gemmingen Brass Band. So, like, we got to play a little bit of German music, and also we they got to play a little jazz with us, which was really cool. And then after we, like, Ooh. after the performance, we all just had, like, a, like a maybe two-hour dance party where we were all just, like, playing German music, playing American music and just going crazy and just having a bunch of fun. And that was something we really didn't do in a lot of other places. And that was a very special moment for me. I'm so glad. Oh, man, it sounded like a great time, Ross, too. And th- and I appreciate you for bringing that back and sharing it with us. And uh, once again, join us on the Splash Live. We have West Bloomfield resident and Blue Lake International Exchange Program jazz band member Ross Miller talking about such a great international experience i want to ask you um i know it's not easy going into an entire different country with an entire different system entire different language there had to have been some obstacles and challenges talk about some of the challenges you may have faced and talk about how you overcame them also i think going off the language barrier i'd say the hardest was definitely in france because France, not a lot of people know English, and a lot of people speak French as, like, their primary language. And it's, so mm-hmm. I would say the, my family knew mostly French, and I learned a tiny bit of French. Like, I was using Duolingo coming up to it, so I knew very basic French, and, but also we used a lot of dual or not Duolingo, but... Google Translate and just ways of translating to understand yep. things. Yep. We couldn't fully get the point across. And they used Google Translate if they were trying to say something. It was definitely very helpful with that. And yeah. just, I mean, we also used it in other places. And one thing that was really cool is in Berlin, my host mother didn't know a lot of English, but she was from Ecuador, so she knew Spanish. So I was able to communicate mm. with her in Spanish, which was really cool yeah nice look at you okay yeah that's very very cool ross and hey listen we don't have too much time but i i do appreciate one last question i feel like this is very important if you can answer this very briefly how do you feel like this experience in the program that you're part of actually influenced your career going forward as a musician i think it's definitely made me consider like doing stuff in Europe, maybe like if I do music stuff, end up mm. doing it in Europe just because it was a very nice place and it had, I enjoyed my time there a lot and I would like to see it out more and just uh, stuff like that would be really cool to me. 
Oh man, yeah, and, and I bet, I bet. See, and now that you've been there, you know what it's about. You're a little bit more used to it, and it, it makes it so much better. So, hey, we appreciate you for taking your time to be with us again and sharing your experience with us once again. West Bloomfield resident and Blue Lake International Exchange Program jazz band member Ross Miller. Thank you again. We appreciate your time. No problem. Thank you so much for having. Me. Oh, absolutely, man. Oh, man, just doing stuff like that, Tyler. Such a young age, having that great experience. I love to see it. I love the maturity in him, too. So great. And uh, Debbie Binder did a great job uh, with him. That's her son, by the way. So I uh, just wanted to say that. And, uh, yeah, great, great story, Tyler. Yeah, these these experiences are just do just that, as you said, Kevin. Help help these young people mature and learn a little bit of what the world is like outside of their community. It's why we see such great growth from our kids when they leave Greater West yes. Bloomfield and go on to school yes. or into the workforce in other places, and then they come back and they impress us so much from what they've learned from experiencing mm -hmm. a little bit of life outside of their hometown. Now, Kevin, before we, we head out for today, I want to get, let people know that the election may be a week away. It's tough to believe that we're that close to the actual primary day itself, but early voting is underway in Greater West Bloomfield. It was off to a really good start over the weekend. I talked to someone out at the library just this morning as I was out there taking a few pictures uh, of the early voting signs who says it's been a pretty steady flow out there since it began on Saturday. So early voting uh, began on, on the 27th. It's currently running at the West Bloomfield Township Public okay. Library, also at the Oakland County Clerk's Office. It's another early voting regional center here in our local mm -hmm. community. And for any questions you may have about early voting or uh, opportunities to vote in this upcoming election, I would encourage you in West Bloomfield, contact Debbie Binder and her team at the clerk's office or do the same in Keagle Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and Orchard Lake Village in your local clerk's office. Or even get information from the Oakland County Clerk's Office through the Oakland County blog, oaklandcountyblog.com, or on Facebook where they posted a link to that article, facebook.com slash oakgov. Great time to get out and have your voice heard in the community in this upcoming election. That is going to do it for this Monday edition of the Splash Live. I want to thank our whole, our whole crew, Calvin Brown, Jake Schaff, and Anthony Juba at Master Control. Alongside Kevin McIntosh, I'm Tyler Keeft. Thanks for tuning in to the Splash Live.